When will The Simpsons end? It's a question that people have been asking for a very, very long time. Everyone seems to have a different perspective on when the show first lost its way, with a multitude of articles, interviews, and of course videos, discussing just how and when the show has lost its way. In truth, it's something I've wanted to talk about since the beginning of the channel. I mean, it was the subject of my undergraduate dissertation, a link to which can be found in this video's description. But suffice to say, whenever you think it happened, and whatever causes you attribute to it, there's been a vocal campaign from some sections of the Simpsons fanbase to cancel the show for some time, which obviously begs an arguably more important question. How exactly should The Simpsons end? Now I'm sure everyone has their own opinion on this, and I genuinely doubt that there will be a way to neatly end The Simpsons that would satisfy every single section of the fanbase. But, what if I told you that The Simpsons had arguably already aired a finale so perfect that it begs the question as to why the show bothered to continue past this point in the first place? I'm talking about Series 23, Episode 9. Holidays of Future Past. There's a bit of context for this. In 2011, the future of The Simpsons was somewhat in jeopardy after it leaked that Fox were potentially asking the show's principal cast to take a 45% pay cut from their $8 million salaries in order to allow the show to continue its production. Given the circumstance, writer J. Stuart Burns and showrunner Al Jean devised the episode as a potential series finale, hoping that it would provide sufficient closure to the series were it the case that Fox and the cast were unable to come to a compromise. Whether you consider it good news or bad news, the actors and Fox found a solution, and the episode was aired as any other episode of the series. But upon closer examination, it becomes clear that Holidays of Future Past is not only a rare feat, a genuinely well-crafted late-period episode of The Simpsons, but also an almost perfect season finale to the show, providing audiences with narrative and emotional closure after more than 20 years of spending time with America's favourite Yellow family. More specifically, the episode follows three rules which I believe are paramount to the success of any show's final episode. It finishes the story, lets us say goodbye to the characters, and provides a sense of closure. Across this video, I'm going to be evaluating the episode specifically as a series finale, to give you an idea as to why I think Holidays of Future Past is exactly how The Simpsons should have ended. Let's start with our first rule, finishing the story. More than anything else, great season finales need to provide the final chapter in the journey that we've been on. They need to wrap up all the disparate threads that have been laid, both plot-wise and thematically, and answer any of the burning questions viewers have, whilst all the while telling a coherent story. In Breaking Bad, it's Felina showing us Walt's final fate in regard to his decision in the very first episode, to show us how his meth dealing has ultimately destroyed all he ever cared about. In Parks and Recreations, it's one last ride giving the viewer the chance to see Leslie potentially finally realise her dream of becoming President of the United States. And in Futurama's two final episodes, The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings, and meanwhile, it's providing us with the outcome of Fry and Leela's relationship, whether ambiguously or directly. But what's of The Simpsons, a show that employs an elastic narrative and rarely has any semblance of plot advancement? Well, in spite of this, The Simpsons is still a show that has been trying to tell us a story since the very first episode, and that story is about family. Any Simpsons episode worth its salt has always had some focus on family, whether it be directly in episodes like You Only Move Twice, or Marge racing to save Homer in an episode like Marge vs the Monorail, The Simpsons have always worn its heart proudly on its sleeve, and its strength lies in the interactions between each of the members of the titular family. Homer, Marge, Lisa, Bart, and McGaggy. What? It's not McGaggy's birthday? Sorry. Maggie. Whilst all of the show's characters are essentially in stasis when it comes to age, the ending trajectory for The Simpsons has always been somewhat inevitable. Eventually, Lisa, Bart and Maggie will leave the nest, become their own people, and by virtue of this, we will see and judge Homer and Marge's success as parents. And what better way to explore this endgame than an episode which flashes forward to the future and not only shows us how Bart, Lisa and Maggie will turn out, but crucially, also shows us how they'll face the same struggles as Homer and Marge when it comes to parenting. Most flash-forward episodes of The Simpsons have focused more on the career prospects or other pivotal moments in their children's life, such as getting married or facing unemployment. But Holidays of Future Past is solidly focused on exploring the families that Bart and Lisa will raise, and how each Simpsons child continues to be influenced by Homer and Marge. The episode begins with the family taking their annual Christmas holiday photo in what seems like a normal episode, before we're greeted with a montage of the family's photos over the years, showing the Simpsons children growing older whilst also marking significant life developments. That is, until we settle in the episode's setting, 30 years in the future, in which Bart is a divorced dad of two struggling to connect with his kids, and Lisa is married to Milhouse, with a teenage daughter who seemingly views her with contempt, whilst Maggie is a successful musician, pregnant with her first child. For a series of circumstances, each child will be coming home for Christmas for the first time ever, which sets the stage for an episode which explores the challenges of parenthood through the eyes of both Marge, Homer, and their children. For Bart, the episode revolves around him learning how to connect with his kids, and this comes through him learning from his own relationship with Homer. 
During a pivotal moment in the episode, Bart questions how his kids have such a bond with Homer, despite Homer's shortcomings as a father. How can he be such a cool grandfather when he's such a lousy father? And Marge's response perfectly illustrates the level of narrative closure the writers are shooting for in this episode. People learn from their mistakes, and your father made so many mistakes. Homer has many shortcomings as a father. He's lazy, often disinterested in his kids, and unable to deal with their increased complexity as they get older. I I didn't think you'd understand. Hey, just because I don't care doesn't mean I don't understand. But at the same time, as we see here, he will ultimately learn from his mistakes and become a better person through these experiences. And likewise, Bart will have to undergo the same rites of passage with his own children. As Homer points out later in the episode, Everyone thinks their dad's a jerk. And everyone's right. But when you get older, you realize how much you love him. This sequence provides something of a thematic coda to The Simpsons as a whole, showing how Bart and Homer's relationship will ultimately work out. Bart will always feel some resentment towards his father, just as Homer will always feel some resentment towards Abe. But in the end, they will reach a type of common understanding and be able to learn from each other. And this is reflected in Bart's closing monologue to his kids, which mirrors many of the talks that Homer has given his children over the years. The only thing worth anything in my life is you. In this moment of vulnerability, Bart is able to recapture his children's affection, and it feels a fitting payoff to Bart's arc that he would encounter the same problems with his children that Homer struggles with. Similarly, Lisa's daughter, Zia, seems reluctant to talk to her, and the episode spends its time drawing parallels between Lisa's relationship with her daughter and her relationship with Marge. I am trying to deal with my disrespectful daughter, but you are too clueless to understand what that's like. Like Bart's storyline, Lisa's closure ultimately comes from a resolution which falls in line with the show's past. As Lisa resolves to spy on her daughter, she discovers that when her daughter retreats online, she's actually going to a place which is very much at home. <sighs> it's always been apparent on the show that Lisa holds a great deal of respect for Marge. From Marge being able to get her out of depression in moaning Lisa, Now on, let me do the smiling for both of us. Through to Marge showing Lisa how the Simpsons gene doesn't impact the women of the family. Wait a minute, Homer, you didn't ask everybody. What about the women? It has been clear that Lisa is someone who looks up to her mother deeply, and in this moment, we get to see Lisa repeat the same cycle, feeling distant from her daughter in terms of their interests, but ultimately harbouring an emotional connection and level of mutual respect. These plots both work succinctly as individual stories, but also feel effective closures for the series characters. It feels true to Bart that he will become his father, and face the same struggles that Homer has when it comes to understanding his kids. Just as it feels right that Lisa will often feel isolated from her daughter, just as Marge has done with Lisa, but that both of these characters will become inspirations that guide their children along the right path. In doing this, Holidays of Future Past succinctly wraps up The Simpsons in a narrative sense, giving us a chance to see how through their experiences with their parents, The Simpsons children will be shaped and moulded as adults, and thus thematically rounds off the show's narrative by demonstrating Marge and Homer's successes and flaws as parents. But rounding off a show's narrative isn't the only ingredient in a successful season finale, and Holidays of Future Past would merely be average were it not for another key ingredient. It lets us say goodbye to the characters. The best series finales don't just complete the show in a narrative sense, but also give us our lasting images of the people we've grown to love over the years. They give us moments between characters we as fans have been screaming for, and provide our characters the chance to have the conversations we've always wanted them to have. In 30 Rock, it's Tracy and Lizzie's conversation in the strip club about their friendship in the episode Last Lunch. In Spaced, it's where Tim, Mike and Brian reconcile with Marsha after upsetting her. And in Bojack Horseman, well, the series finale is basically a whole episode filled with these conversations, from Bojack talking to Todd on the beach, his dance with Princess Caroline, and of course, his conversation with Diane on the roof although that's a topic for another video. These moments don't just illuminate things about the characters, or give us a sort of one last ride to see them together. They show us what these characters have ultimately been about since the very first episode. For those characters to say the things we have always known, but until now, have remained unspoken. In the case of Holidays of Future Past, this moment occurs at the end of the second act, during a scene in which Bart and Lisa talk about their doubts and worries as parents, while sat together in Bart's treehouse. I gotta reconnect with those boys. This moment of honesty between Lisa and Bart feels like a culmination of their sibling rivalry, which has been one of the backbones of the series. We've known for a long time that, as much as they bicker, they've always loved each other deep down. You're the person I always wanted to be. Aww. And this admission from Bart that Lisa is the person who he wants to be is a perfect character moment. It doesn't feel laboured or contrived or out of step with anything that the series has done before, whilst also feeling wholly unique in the Simpsons pantheon. In this instance, the decision to set the episode in the future works in the show's favour, as it gives Bart and Lisa new anxieties as adults, and doesn't tread over ground already covered in episodes like Lisa's First Word or Lisa on Ice, and would have been a perfect way to say goodbye to these characters. Season finales are of course ultimately about endings, and all successful season finales have a simple but effective weapon in their arsenal to provide a satisfying conclusion, and that is a sense of closure.
While season finales must provide a narrative conclusion and a chance to say goodbye to our characters, they must also provide us with a lasting image to look back on. They must make us feel the story is complete, as if, were we never to see these people again, we would be safe in the knowledge that their stories were over. This does not mean a final, definitive narrative beat, but rather a true sense of ending. Our characters may theoretically go on more adventures, but the story that we've been told is well and truly over. In The Office UK, it's that final moment where David Brent manages to make his staff laugh. Having spent the whole season trying to impress them, he finally gets that one thing he's always wanted, and it feels like an effective goodbye. In Life on Mars, it's the moment Sam jumps from the building, realising that the world he spent the series escaping from was his true home after all. And in Peep Show, it's that final scene on Jez and Mark's sofa, their happiness once again ripped from them at the last second, and thus, I mean that they'll be doomed to live this life on repeat forever. In Holidays of Future Past, this moment comes during the show's final moments in which the family finally all reunited for the holidays posed for a picture together, their first in many years. This moment is the perfect lasting image for one particular reason. It mirrors directly the show's very first episode, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, to show the family together at Christmas. This sequence isn't just a cheeky reference to the show's past, but also demonstrates how the two episodes act as thematic bookends for the show. In Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, Homer was worried about how his family would view him if he couldn't give them a perfect Christmas. And likewise, Whole Days of Future Past is about Bart and Lisa trying to do right by their family over the holiday season. Likewise, both stories conclude with the introduction of a new member to the Simpsons clan, Santa's little helper, and Maggie's newborn child. And in both instances, these images convey the same thing, that the cycle of the Simpsons clan and all its associated dysfunction will carry on forever. As Bart notes earlier in the episode, Not me, man. This cycle of jerks has to end. And this cycle of jerks is exactly what we as viewers have experienced watching The Simpsons over the years, the trials and tribulations of a dysfunctional family. This final sequence would have provided the perfect sense of closure to the whole show, allowing our story, the story of Homer, Marge, Lisa, Bart and Maggie, to wrap effectively, whilst also suggesting the ultimate trajectory of where all these characters would end up. Each would be doomed to repeat the mistakes of their predecessors, but each would also be liable to learn some things along the way, and holidays of future past would have given us a superb means by which to close out on the show. But alas, this wasn't to be. Far from being the satisfying finale that it could have been, Holidays of Future Past simply became another episode in the show's 23rd season, carrying little importance beyond being one of the better entries in the show's recent history. The episode spawned a far inferior sequel, Days of Future Future, which, whilst containing a few solid jokes, failed to reach the emotional heights achieved previously. Ultimately, Holidays of Future Past would have been a fitting end to a show which has long passed its sell-by date. And however The Simpsons does choose to end, I hope sincerely that Al Jean and the team look towards this episode as a template for how to execute a near perfect season finale. Thank you for watching another full fat video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of our deep dives into reality TV. Also, huge thanks to all of our patrons, especially Dr. Chike, Jax Merrick, and Mike Nandu. You're all amazing. Until next time, stay.